Welcome friends, this is uh, Dr. Jaitley, your cardiologist on your favorite uh, video site, Muni Meter Health, uh, which is a teaching a uh, educational channel being shown on several social platforms, uh, mainly to enhance uh, medical education and patient education. This is only to improve the clinical outcomes. Uh, we know the clinical results are actually only getting better and better when you combine the patient education, the health literacy factor into a built-in medical education, which is already there. The medical fraternity, obviously, they go for their CMEs and uh, take the exams and what have you, like the residents, the fellows, and the doctors who are in practice, like me. But the fact is that the patients need to be educated well, too, about their health and illness, and that's my deepest belief. And therefore, we have uh, this uh, forum right Right now where we are primarily promoting and enhancing educational um, uh, information to our uh, to our patients at large so welcome again to Muni Meter Health uh, without any further ado I like to delve into the subject matter but before I do that I quickly want to tell you that uh, this is only purely an education channel as I said it's not a treatment advice channel number one number two it's uh, it's not a substitute to your syllabus, uh, my dear uh, students and fellows and residents. It is always a supplement, so please stick to your syllabi that has been uh, prescribed to you by your universities, societies, and colleges. And uh, three, uh, feel free and uh, subscribe to my channel uh, whenever you want, so this way it's freely available to all, and please share it with your friends. Okay, so um, today we're going to be talking about what is EECP. What is EECP? That's Enhanced External counter pulsation enhanced external counter pulsation so essentially I've shown it uh, shown it to you as a schematic basically the person is laying on a table and uh, is uh, is hooked up to a console which is here and the console connects to just like your blood pressure cuffs these cuffs are tied all the way up to the uh, pretty much your forearms uh, in other words uh, extend your blood pressure cuffs right now because normally they only go to the upper arms so you can go all the way to there to the forearms here as well and these cuffs are nicely tied just like uh, your regular blood pressure cuff as I said and then you have cuffs also in the legs for instance starting all the way from this uh, pelvic area down to almost to the shins if you will so they cover the thighs they cover the popliteal or the knee area and then down into the calves and then up to the shins so on on either side these cuffs are tied now what happens is when you uh, this machine is supposed to be pumping air as it pumps air it develops a pressure almost up to more than 300 millimeters mercury okay just like your blood pressure normally that you normally do except that this is so nicely synchronized if you will to the EKG now this is for the medical fraternity to know the students and residents the patients don't need to know this really because this is uh, far detailed but then quickly I just wanted to tell you that because we have an EKG complex the EKG or ECG whichever you like to call it has a complex which is PQRST so we know that the atrial uh, or the uh, the atria or the top chambers they are contracting during this interval the p wave and the qrs is coordinating with the with the ventricular contraction so the atria contract first now here is another schematic that i like to show you sometimes uh, mainly for the uh, quick brush here so this way everybody has is on the same page so when these atria they contract the ventricles will relax so ventricles are relaxing but when the ventricles are contracting these atria will relax obviously so that the blood can go straight up into these major vessels from here so the it's so a one-way traffic as we all know so what's happening the top chambers are contracting that contracts with uh, that coincides with the p wave the bottom chambers are contracting that coin uh, co uh, co uh, you know coincides with the with the qrs complex so p wave i'm writing on the top this is at the top and this is the qrs which is at the bottom of the ekg so now what happens is uh, each of these pulsations like it goes boom 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 as it's going up in the arms and by the way this machine does make some noise and uh, you'll be feeling some pulsations when the person is laying down but that's okay because you know I'll just explain to you why it is so beneficial to have this done as a matter of fact and I've had the experience of doing uh, hundreds and hundreds of these uh, in my uh, in my in my career 
um, you know, and uh, guided the students and the residents as well. And they were thrilled to see. And of course, the patients were very, it's very rewarding. And I'll tell you exactly where it's being used. So now, so what happens is once you do that, the, the key is that this, uh, co this coordinated uh, air pressure that rises and releases, it quickly rises and releases. Uh, the pressures will rise and release here in all these cuffs here, if you will. And all of that is quickly happening in every cardiac cycle. In other words, each time a PQRST is being generated, so every heartbeat, each time the heart contracts, it is happening. However, within the heartbeat, it is also coordinated with the with the QRS, not with the P wave, but with the QRS. So what happens is when the QRS is happening, what is happening? The ventricles are contracting. So that's when it deflates. So with QRS, it deflates. And with the P wave, it inflates. So, uh, so what have you learned so far? So when it deflates, what happens? It is aiding the heart to pump blood up into the aorta because that's when the blood is being pumped okay because the ventricles are contracting so with the qrs it deflates so now the pressure is nicely uh, so the artery arterial supply uh, is uh, being facilitated in other words so the arterial bed is being facilitated with the with the with the, with the ongoing flow so now the flow is uh, uh, being facilitated because all this is deflated but soon after that it inflates again quickly now by the way these machines this machine really has uh, has a has a huge thrust in other words it'll thrust and quickly put 300 millimeters of mercury into these pressures and then quickly release it also in like in a second so you can only imagine how fast it's all all of this is happening it's uh, it is very similar to the blood pressure machine but there it takes several seconds for the pressures to go down and up while you're pumping it here it is like in a matter of microseconds so quickly the pressure goes up so then, you know person doesn't even feel it but actually it's coordinated so well with the with the whole point is it's coordinated well with the EKG. So now what happens is when it inflates it, it sends the blood up into the aorta and back into these coronaries. Now this is the aorta right here. So there's a retrograde flow. We call it a retrograde flow. The a blood comes back a little bit and then obviously some of the uh, some of these coronaries they will actually get or all these coronaries will get actually better perfused because the coronary flow remember occurs in if you all know in diastole because when the heart is relaxing that's when the coronary flow occurs because when it is contracting obviously these vessels will be compressed so the whole idea is you want to improve the coronary flow in these patients and uh, because it's occurring in diastole so therefore that is the advantage that you want to take out of this machine in order to um, achieve that so where would you apply that clinically well let's move to the left side of the panel now this is where it's being applied it's called refractory angina now we know angina occurs when patients have all these blockages in their coronaries so when they have blockages in these coronaries nothing is working and it's called refractory angina in other words patient may have severe heart failure so they are in poor conditions to be in, uh, to be operated and so they are called inoperable sometimes the uh, the bypass uh, bypasses cannot be reached or stents cannot be placed because the the far twigs or there are too many twigs where there might be um, in the arteries in the coronaries there might be blockages to attend to so even one two or three uh, PCIs or uh, the stents as we call them they are not uh, enough to really uh, you know take care of the obstruction sometimes they could be microvascular they could be very small little twigs within the coronary tree if you will and uh, they could be blocked so there where the bypass will not work and the stents will not work so even the medical therapy has failed so when medical therapy fails and patients are still experiencing refractory angina those are the cases where you want to do or sometimes when it's inoperable or sometimes the risks are too high prohibitively too high and uh, no surgeon wants to operate because they have say bad kidney disease or they've had a uh, partial stroke in the past or they have had some uh, cerebral or um, you know other other uh, other morbidities which may be involved where um, it's too risky to really take the patient for surgery so whenever all of those things exist or sometimes patients are non-compliant they're not going to take the aspirin and plavix or it's too dangerous to put them on an aspirin and plavix because normally after pci you will require these patients to be on aspirin and plavix so again it becomes a contraindication say patients have some you know um, a prohibitive risk from uh, tendencies to bleed from uh, antiplatelet agents like um, uh, say aspirin or uh, clopidogrel or plavix so all those all those conditions where it is where the case is inoperable as i said or where the case it is prohibitively high risk 
like like I said, or sometimes the disease is so far so far distal, in other words, so far out uh, into these coronaries where it, it's inoperable again because of that reason. Or even the PCI or cabbages that have been performed in the past in those patients which have failed. So those are the cases where there is refractory angina. In other words, angina that cannot be treated medically or surgically. Those patients can belong here. Where? At the EECP. This is the EECP machine that is hooked up to the person. And by the way, the, the course for the EECP is about 36 times, uh, uh, I believe, in the uh, in about uh, six weeks or so. So you can complete 35 to 36 uh, sessions in about six weeks. And each is about, uh, duration is about 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. So the person spends about an hour at the cardiologist's office. It's always supervised. There's an EKG monitoring going on. And of course, you are timed with that EKG. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's absolutely a safe technique. The only contraindication is when you have an aortic valve problem. So remember, if you have an aortic valve problem, you cannot take this patient for surgery. Or if you have an aortic problem, like if somebody has an aortic uh, aneurysm or uh, some uh, uh, impending uh, dissection, if you will. I hate to use that word impending, but any aortic issue. So do not bring this patient into the EECP. So those are some of the contraindications. And of course, there are some relative contraindications, which is beyond our discussion here, but the fact is. So the mechanism it works is, as I just said, diastolic pressure is elevated. Um, to improve the coronary circulation in these vessels because coronaries perfuse only during diastole and you want the pressures to be high. Retrograde aortic flow is in diastole occurs, so we know the retrograde a uh, aortic flow occurs in diastole and systole it is pumped out. Afterload reduction in systole occurs obviously because uh, it deflates during during uh, the systole. So when it deflates during the QRS complex, as I said, it deflates so the aortic uh, the aorta will pump out the blood more easily because now the arterial bed is nice and dilated so it will deflate in all four extremities out here like that and then the external counter pulsations in the arms and legs and thighs and pelvis of course as we just enumerated okay so uh, contraindications we have discussed the mechanism of action of EECP and the coronary flow is enhanced during diastole because that's when the flow occurs and uh, during systole obviously the afterload reduction occurs so this way the blood can be fed facilitated more, uh, uh, can facilitate the aortic flow and therefore the arterial bed, uh, it can reach the arterial bed more easily and perfuse the tissues. So in other words, the refractory angina which normally occurs, uh, which is normally uh, uncontrollable, now gets starting to get better because these patients after 36 weeks of trial, um, of this uh, therapeutic trial, they start to feel a lot better and they can walk further. Their duration time to angina is much, much prolonged. In other words previously they could watch the walk say six minutes on a treadmill now they can walk 10 minutes and not have pain they may walk 12 minutes and not have pain or even 15 minutes on a treadmill okay so this is uh, a quick uh, a quick review on exter enhanced external counter uh, counter pulsations so i'm sure it'll be on the boards one way or the other on the exams but of course in practice also uh, again not many centers are uh, putting this machine in their in their practices not many hospitals have it because the, it's hard to find so many refractory angina patients to really uh, fit them in but whenever they are you know certainly they can they can uh, they can look for these uh, pulse uh, ECP uh, services which are available in certain doctors uh, clinics or uh, hospitals and of course if they would like to do that consult with your cardiologist make sure there are no contraindications and they like the aortic uh, valve or aortic aneurysm issues and then of course uh, they can after consulting with the cardiologist they can be prescribed EECP okay so i want to thank you again for your attention please if you like it uh, do press the like button i always say and click on the subscribe so this way you guys are subscribed to my money meter health and of course uh, stay on it stay well and until then say goodbye to dr jaitley and see you